Hello everyone and welcome back. Today we're actually in Minnesota on a lake, so we're gonna do something a little bit different. We are going to talk about business. Now, if you are a maker, you know that owning a business as a maker is a labor of love. There is absolutely nothing passive about it. It's a super rewarding journey and it's one that I've been on over the last eight years. And when I think back on this journey in retrospect, I can see some areas where I could definitely have improved upon as a business owner and sped things up a little bit. But there are a few key decisions that we made as a business that really sort of accelerated our growth. And these are things that I can see now as I think about them, but it's not something that was obvious at the time. And so I wanted to share one of those decisions because it's probably the one decision that made the biggest difference in our business. So what's cool about this concept is that it is a mind shift. It's a change in your way of thinking about your business. And for us, it's something that helped us grow 20 times in the last five years. We were in a place where we were stuck. In our first year, we made $5,000. And for the three years after that, we made about $20,000 every single year. So we were kind of flat in our sales. And a lot of things happened during that time that might explain it. But one of the main things is that I was thinking of the business as a hobby. Now, if you're a maker, you know that most businesses start as hobbies. We make soap, so our business is really something for us that started as just something fun to do. I started making soap in my kitchen, and it was really just dabbling around with a lot of different ingredients and figuring things out and just having fun. And that's a great way to start a business. I think that there's a lot to be said about having a hobby that you're really passionate about and then growing that hobby into a business because you bring with it that you know excitement for your craft into your business. Whereas if you start just as a business, you don't really have that sort of self-discovery process built into what you're doing. So a hobby is basically a process of figuring things out, how to make things, um, discovering what you love to make, basically finding your path in your own journey, whether you're making jewelry or soap or anything else, it is a time for you to play. It's a time for you to have fun with your craft and it's super enjoyable. And a lot of times people have a full-time job while they're doing this. And you start to think, hey, maybe I can turn this into a business. Maybe this is something I wanna do. And then you kind of decide, okay, this is gonna be a business. But there's one thing that's really missing from this process. And that's being intentional about changing your hobby from a hobby to a business. And while the hobby phase is really fantastic for growth and learning about what you wanna do and what you love making, there is a very different process involved when you become a business. A business is about bringing all of that stuff that you've been doing as a hobby into focus. What I find happens with this mindset shift is it either happens all the way or it typically really happens just part of the way. And that's what happened to us as we were growing our business. We didn't really dive all in into the business side. And what I mean by this is that, you know, maybe you're going along in your hobby and you're deciding to sell soap, but you don't actually really know how much your bars of soap cost. Maybe you kind of know how much they cost, you know how much the ingredients cost, maybe you know how much time you've put into them, but you don't really know the full picture. And then on top of that, you're still dabbling, you're still having fun, you're still making a lot of new things. Maybe you don't have a product line and having a product line is really key for having a business. And not only just having a product line, but being intentional about it, having a product line that suits what you wanna make. And then on top of that, having that product line in stock, which is really important. When you have a product line that is always in stock, then your customers can depend on you. They can depend on the things that they love and buying them over and over again. And so these are sort of the beginning stages of a business. And this is what we did in 2019 with our business is we decided to basically keep things in stock, you know, have a product line, except 
Our product line was huge. I think we had like 31 different soaps that were in stock all the time, which was really difficult to do. We often ran out of scents anyway. And even though we tried really hard to keep everything in stock, it didn't always work out. So we were keeping that hobby mentality, making new soaps all the time, dabbling and experimenting, buying lots of different essential oils. And at that time we were still using fragrance oils. So we hadn't really honed in on what we actually wanted to accomplish as a business. And in 2020 is when we really started to think about dialing everything back, just simplifying. And also, um, in addition to simplifying our product line, really figuring out how much it cost us to make things, because that's the year we hired an employee. So that year in 2020, we went from making $20,000 a year to $100,000 a year. So we grew five times, which is pretty massive for a small business. And it was the first time that we started to see like, hey, this could really be something. We hired an employee, which freed up my time to be able to make soap. And it really felt good, but we still weren't in that business mentality that I'm talking about because we were still kind of all over the place. We had a lot of different ingredients we were using. All of our recipes were using different oils, different essential oils. And so when I talk about a business mentality, it's to really hone in on what your product line is, what your costs are. Can you hire people? Can you get yourself into a space? And can you do wholesale? That's really a big one, which we could probably do a whole video just on that. But um, anyway, to reiterate, hobby is self-discovery process, a really important process for anyone that's a maker. And then if you decide, and you do need to decide this, like, do I really want a business? And the answer might be no, in which case, keep going at it with your hobby. I mean, that's a great way spend your time, make a little bit of side money, that kind of stuff. But if you decide you want to be a business, go in all the way. Don't sit in this gray area where you're kind of like, yeah, I want to buy a whole bunch of fragrance oils that I don't really know how I'm going to use. Or, you know, I have a whole bunch of different molds and I make soaps of varying sizes all the time. I mean, you really need to decide, okay, this is a business this is what our soap is going to look like. This is what our base oils are going to be. Maybe they're the same for every single soap, which I highly recommend, by the way. You can start master batching. You can start making purchases in bulk. You can buy your ingredients at discounted rates, like your oils, your essential oils, those kinds of things. And so when everything is sort of coming together and getting smaller and simplifying, and you're becoming more focused, you don't need as many supplies. You don't need as many ingredients. You are really saving on your costs, on all your expenses, and there's no waste. I mean, that's really the goal, is that everything that you purchase is for your business and will be used for your business. The other thing is production. So when you are a production soap maker, which is a term I sometimes use, you are making your soap in large quantities. So economies of scale are really important for soap making. The larger your batches, the more you'll have in stock, and then you'll be able to use some of those bulk purchases that you're making for your ingredients really efficiently. Um, also just your space, you know, how you do things, how you move in your room and the flow of everything is really important. And that gets sort of developed over time as you live in your space and you start working on your production. Finally, um, your production schedule is super important. And if you don't have a production schedule, that kind of means you haven't really shifted into this mindset yet. You might still be sitting in this gray area. A production schedule means you're not just looking at your shelves and thinking, hmm, I think I could use more of, you know, this coconut and rose soap. Basically, what it means is that you know exactly what soaps you're going to make next. And what we would do is at the beginning of the week, we would make our schedule for the entire week. And we knew how to do that because we had a spreadsheet. It tracked our sales for the last three months, the average per month, how much soap was selling monthly on average. And then we were trying to make sure that we had two to three months worth of inventory for those soaps. And that was different for every single soap. So some soaps we were making every week, 
some soaps we were making once a month or even less. So having a production schedule is really key for your business. And then you know when to purchase ingredients, you know what inventory you need on stock. I mean, I could go on and on, but the idea here is that you are no longer thinking about this as a hobby. You're thinking about it as a business. And when you do that, there are other major benefits too. For instance, your customers will feel it. They will know that you are a business. When you see your business a certain way, that's how your customers are gonna see it. And if you're a little bit muddled about what you wanna do, you're not sure exactly what your product line is or which direction you wanna go, whether you wanna use you know, fragrance oils, if you wanna be all natural, those kinds of decisions, those decisions have to be made and you have to run with it and you know choose your path and tell your customers exactly what you're about and so your customers will feel that that confidence you have in your business you know you know what your journey was but you know where you've arrived and that's the place you know where your business is and that's how your business is going to thrive one other thing is a lot of people will say you know, if I am not a hobby anymore and I'm just a business, that sounds kind of boring. I have to make the same things over and over again. And it's true, you know, you really do have to make the same products over and over again. But one way that you can play around and kind of get back to that hobby space is to do seasonal releases. Seasonal releases really help you play. And we do this in our business, or we did do this where every season we would have a soap release and we typically had four brand new scents. And what we did is we brought back two scents that we had made in previous years and then we created two new ones. And so this didn't impact our production schedule too much because once you do have a production schedule, you'll start to realize that it's kind of a pain to make something new because it kind of puts you off track and slows things down, but it'll get you back to playing. But when you come up with those seasonal scents that you're making, you definitely want to have a plan. And when you make a purchase of, you know, brand new essential oils you haven't used before or colorants, you do that with intention. And then after you make that release, things may or may not go according to plan. And that's okay. You can still sell those soaps as a summer release or a holiday release. But every once in a while, you'll get a soap that is just like perfect. You know, this happened to us a bunch of times. For example, our turmeric orange clove and our rosemary mint juniper, our wild lavender, those all started as seasonal soaps and then they made it into our product line. And so what you're doing there is you're fine tuning your product line. It's, it's changing, evolving slowly with intention, but you're making it better over time. And so some of the scents that maybe aren't selling as well drop off and then some of these new seasonal scents make their way into your product line. So it's not stagnant, it's still an evolution, but you're doing it with intention and you're making sure that you're using everything that you have in your studio and you know not buying a bunch of things that you don't need. Anyway, um, that's just a little bit about our business and how we grew and I hope that it is helpful for your business. If you find that you're sitting in that gray area, just really think about what you can do to shift this focus over to business. You know, you really have to make some decisions and the longer you sit in that gray area, the harder those decisions are gonna be. So the quicker you can go from hobby to business um, and the more deliberate you are about that shift, the better it will be for your business. All right. Oh, and also if you start as a business, which I have seen some people do, you know, really go in with just six soaps, for example, as their product line and just start on that end. Make sure that you get back to some of that hobby um, side of things, you know, just playing and experimenting with things and make some time for that so that you kind of get the best of both worlds. All right. We'll see you next time. Have a great night. Bye.